Good morning, Rowan. What you're looking at is Our Lady of the Assumption Cathedral in Port-au-Prince. The famous 2010 Haitian earthquake destroyed the cathedral and it hasn't been rebuilt since, which is quite topical for what I'm going to cover today. It's not going to be a deep dive into Haitian history, but it will at least be a jumping off point. The colony of Haiti, or Saint-Domingue, was one of the most profitable colonies in the America, with crops like sugar, coffee, and indigo being grown and exported. However, this only applied if you were free and actually owned the land. If you were a slave, your life expectancy was good as dead. Around the time of the French Revolution, the Haitians had their own revolution, and overthrew the French colonial overlords. However, just because multiple factions agreed to overthrow the French does not mean they would agree on how to lead. You see this with other revolutions too. America had a very rocky start under the Articles of Confederation with the warlord period, the Mexican Revolution had a revolving door of governments that I'm not going to get into. However, the Haitians did agree to pay an indemnity to France in exchange for diplomatic recognition. Nobody wanted to recognize them, a colony which became free because it overthrew its slave masters in a very bloody and genocidal revolution. Thomas Jefferson refused to recognize the Haitians, and America would not recognize them for decades they also, they being the Haitians, also did this while the French held them at cannon point. It was either get diplomatic recognition or basically bet the whole island and possibly be destroyed. Well, not the whole island, just this part of it. Either way, the disastrous debt meant cash could not be used by Haiti. It went out of Haiti to fund the French and later the Americans. To pay back such a disastrous debt, Haiti would tear itself apart by cutting down all the trees in addition to the cash crops, basically making the soil really bad by draining it. They would also briefly occupy Santo Domingo and attempted to tax and exploit what would become the Dominican Republic into paying back their debt for them. That went about as well as you'd expect. Remember when I said that revolutions can end with revolving doors of governments? That's basically what happened. Haiti would experience a revolving door of governments, one of which was Woodrow Wilson's America. Oh, Woodrow. Eventually, by the 1950s, they would get some form of stability under Francois de Valier, or Papa Doc as he was called. He is relevant because his regime is responsible for what happens next. In 1958, there was an attempted coup by military officers. This was thwarted, but it helped fuel de Valier's mistrust of the military. This led de Valier to create the Tonton Maku, named after the boogeyman of Haitian legend. Fitting because they terrorized just about everyone in Haiti who was mildly against the regime, or mildly inconvenienced for regime, or anyone, frankly. They were basically ruling without much in the way of oversight. They were a parallel power structure to the military, which threatened to uproot the monopoly on violence. Francois died and was replaced by Jean-Claude, his son. To say the least, Jean-Claude was an incompetent hack. When a dictatorship comes into power, they are less concerned with things like infrastructure and logistics and merit and standards, or at least the illusion of merit and standards. They are concerned with maintaining their continued existence, and they are very paranoid about it. Bribery and cronyism were the standard under the Duvalier. Who cares about building infrastructure? The younger Duvalier was a teenager when he ascended and basically acted like a medieval prince. Under the younger Duvalier's reign, well, his mother's reign since he left all the governing to her, Haiti was plagued by a series of crises. One of the problems was AIDS. Older members of the audience may remember this as the 4-H disease, which stood for hemophiliacs, homosexuals, heroin addicts, and Haitians. Disease spreads wherever it can. However, Haiti's medical infrastructure, or lack thereof, made it a prime target for disease to spread wildly. After all, what medical infrastructure do you have when it all gets embezzled? Then African swine fever also devastated the Creole pig population, angering many farmers because de Valier ordered all the pigs to be killed. Then, during his visit to Haiti, Pope John Paul denounced the country's leadership. I will remind you, Haiti is mostly a Catholic country. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. Haiti was soon swamped with protests against the de Valiers. New elections were being held only to be met with coups and counter coups. Then the UN stepped in, with the Security Council approving a resolution to have the US and a coalition enter Haiti and disband the armed forces altogether. The problem is, just because you disband the organization does not mean you disband the people behind it. Gangs rose from the ashes of this power vacuum. 
A series of natural disasters like the 2010 earthquakes killed a quarter million people and only made things worse. To fill this power vacuum, gangsters kept rising. By the time the 2020s rolled around, COVID had sickened the populace. Another earthquake happened during the COVID pandemic. The president got assassinated, and this happened all within like two years. Coupled with the corruption, because let's face it, it's easier to destroy an institution than it is to destroy decades worth of corruption, and the systemic collapse happening around them because of the natural disasters, the lack of help, this was the spark that began to burn everything to the ground. Since 2020, gangs, which honestly should be called warlords at this point because they are, led by a police officer turned warlord, have been clashing with Haitian police forces and citizens armed with machetes and other farm tools to fight them. And who can blame them? This is what their legislature looks like right now. Yes, they have no legislature. The current state of Haiti looks like warlord-era China. Corruption robbed the coffers of the state. The revolving door of dictatorships and warlords have basically driven all the skilled people, such as engineers and healthcare professionals, off the island. What Haiti is left with is a skeleton crew of skilled people, like healthcare professionals and engineers and mechanics, amid all this political chaos. That's the, in a nutshell, version of what's going on with Haiti right now. This video is over.